All right, everyone, welcome to Story on the Spot. My name is Jim Heskett, and going right over there, that's Kevin Tomlinson. Down there is R.A. McGee. Down there is Nick Thacker. And I'll tell you what, we're going to be right back after the intro. And that intro gets cooler every time I dun, see dun, it. Dun, 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 he did tell us what. <laughs> he did tell us what. <laughs> yeah, and uh, once again, that music music on the intro is by our Mr. Nick Thacker right down there. Yeah, you um, know, even if it was, I bet I would still tie. It wouldn't even win that music. I feel very frozen right now. <laughs> Jim's cockamamie accounting scheme. <laughs> Speaking of, last week, we actually had a tie. Everyone, <laughs> me with me, <laughs> and but I think that one thing we can say for sure that since Craig is not here, he lost. Mm. Yeah. Can we um, say that? Craig was going to join us, but he got arrested <laughs> trying to smuggle syrup uh, across the Canadian American border, mm. and uh, we're sending thoughts and prayers his way. They don't like that. <laughs> so you got a GoFundMe, a GoFundMe set up so we can donate. He might. I'll I'll look into it. Living that sweet Let me know. Life. Get yeah. back the show. Ah, but I'm bumps. Yeah. All right. This week we have a bonus word, and our bonus wait, wait, word whoa, is whoa, zoomer. Whoa, 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 whoa! I didn't see uh, who tied. Tied. Nobody did because it's Everybody. not a real thing. Nobody actually tied. <laughs> Come on. Who, who you just made the, it up who so that I wouldn't win. Was it a three-way tie? Or what? You know what? No, I'm just declaring no, Nick, Nick, Nick won, but he was like, "Well, that can't be true." So <laughs> tie. All right, moving on. Our, our bonus word for this week is Zoomer, which is a nickname for people of Gen Z, uh, teens and early 20s, I think. So Zoomer is your secret word. And if you say it, you might get one of these if I can get over there fast enough. All right, um, guys, let's dig into our first story of the day. This might be a little too big here. It's <clears throat> The former Peppermint Hippo Gentleman's Club in Trenton, Wisconsin, has found an unlikely new life as the All Saints Catholic School opens. Chris Boston, the school's administrator, said the stripper pole had been removed along with the leopard print carpet, but the stage and bar are still there and the building is still owned by the Peppermint Hippo chain. It's an arrangement school leaders have had to come to terms with. Our take on it is that people are people, said school board president David Smith. I kind of picturing Superintendent Chalmers from The Simpsons. We're sinners too, even though we don't agree with their business model per se. Per se. Per se. Per se. <laughs> like my, there's some agreement, but you know, right, per just... se. <laughs> <laughs> on average, we don't. Oh. Christy's a, hey, Christy, you actually made it live. Congratulations. To, to uh, her, her teenagers call her a boomer. Now you can call them zoomers. Yes, you can. But Christy, they'll probably make fun of you for it somehow. They'll work a way to make fun of you. Oh, Fight back. Okay, don't zoomer. give in. Yeah, <laughs> don't give in. <laughs> don't give in. So, who wants to pitch us a story about the strip uh, about the strip club that got turned into a Catholic school? Uh, could be Kevin. Uh, uh, it could I'll be go. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. I don't mind. ready to go. Yeah, I don't mind. Let's do this. So, I think that what we are dealing with is a uh, an international uh, money laundering syndicate. Okay, and so our our the story is is that the people who own the peppermint hippo. Uh, got into some financial problems because the people who own the Spearmint Rhino in Vegas sued them because the name is so ridiculous. You know, it's so ridiculously close. So they they're doing that and and they're they're taking in a lot of money. You know, they're they're getting into the drug trade and all that kind of stuff. And so our heroine um, is a young cop, a very young cop. Okay, and she goes undercover at the Peppermint Hippo. Uh, you know, dancing, trying to get more info on the money laundering scheme. Okay. Well, unbeknownst to her, they kind of shift business models right out from underneath her and, you know, co lease, you know, sublet space to the Catholic girls' school. Well, her uh, superiors say she's not allowed to get off the case. So she goes from stripper to schoolgirl. All right. And now she's undercover as a schoolgirl. All right. Trying to, to break the, the money laundering ring. 
And so I think that's what's going on. We have a, a former stripper undercover is now a schoolgirl uh, trying to bust the bad guys. So it takes perseverance to go from stripper to schoolgirl. I just want you guys to know that. So 21 Shabana. Strip Street. Hey, all right. Um, also, I would just like to point out, uh, Kevin, I'm docking you half a point for collusion. Mm. Not I, coercion. You can't prove that to me. That's a completely <laughs> different shirt. That's a bot. That's, that's a wow. Bot. That's that's an that excellent point. Looks a lot like Nick. It does look that's a lot like shirt, the shirt actually. Nick is wearing. It's probably me. I that's my Kevin Thomas wow. account. <laughs> 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 All, right, All right. So <laughs> who we got one, right? story? Hold on. Let me put the story back oh. up here if you want to see it. I got one. All right, Kevin. What do you got? Okay. Uh, so. The reality of this scenario is that the peppermint hippo isn't a cutesy little name like you might think. It's actually the name of a superior demon. And this strip club is actually a ritualized location uh, where uh, people who are not Zoomers uh, would get on stage and they would gyrate and dance in, an, in a uh, ritual that keeps the peppermint hippo from emerging and taking over and destroying uh, everything it sees. And the stripper pole was where all that activity happened. It was actually the linchpin. It was actually the, the cotter pin of doom where it, uh, it was keeping these uh, two realities from merging so that the peppermint hippo could emerge and, and go on a uh, path of destruction. So by It wasn't even a it, secret word. Why'd you have to say cotter pin? I said cotter pin. <laughs> it's the cotter pin of doom. Who says that? Cotter pin. That's That's the and that's the name of the story, by the way, the Cotter Pen of Doom. So, okay, thank you, Kevin. <laughs> All right, it's a shame nobody's recording. watching because that was awesome. That one should win me. <laughs> there's, some, there's some people watching. There, there's my a Kevin Tomlinson account is is live is watching. Uh, okay, clearly we've got a situation here um, that's similar to money laundering, um, but Spartacus is wrong. It's actually a little bit different. Um, this is a classic case of a priest who uh, has been making drugs, breaking bad style, and uh, he's trying to go legit. He's trying to get into, uh, you know, break. He's not trying to go legit. He's trying to legitimize his front so that he can make um, more business. So he actually sells a product called peppermint dust, and uh, he's been doing it through the strip club. Um, but he's found a way to sell the strip club to his Catholic school. Um, and continue making his peppermint dust in the background and be able to sell it now and get kids hooked even earlier. Um, I think Cotterpin is one word, right? So that doesn't even count. Um, and then uh, <laughs> to the Google. And, uh, and, and then here's, here's the best part. The way he sells his, uh, his, uh, his, his peppermint dust to the Zoomers, to his kids at his school, is uh, uh, Ace Ventura style inside the hippo. He has a big uh, like remote-controlled hippo. Um, and uh, he get, takes it to the zoo and, uh, you know, has the peppermint dust inside there with him. And people come up to the rear end of the hippo every week. And um, and I know Spartacus knows where I'm going with this. And that's where uh, that's where he's, he does his, he does the sales from. That's the story. That's uh, that's actually. What I'm just gonna and that's the story. That's, All right. That's an that's an actual true story. And so don't forget to vote in the comments for who you thought, which one of those terrible pitches was actually uh, was the least, the least terrible. Terrible. <laughs> How dare you? Sir? I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to motivate everybody. I'm trying to Bobby Knight this whole oh. I got to start throwing some chairs around here pretty soon. Unless you guys. Chuck a chair, here. man. Chuck a chair. <laughs> All right. This next story is called Godzilla gum. A mystery unfolded in the mystery section of the Walla Walla Washington Public Library when workers performing renovations demolished a section of shelves and discovered dis a disintegrated paper bag with five full cans of Ham's beer and an unopened bag of Godzilla head gum. Library staff determined the hidden snacks dated back to the 1980s. Library director Aaron Wells posited that somebody had stashed it there and thought maybe they could go back and get it later, but there was no way to get it out because of time. Okay, I had to go. I had to Google Godzilla heads gum. By the way, okay, and it looks awesome, and I now I do now I regret that it's no longer around. Did you Google uh, cotter pin while you were at it? I did. It's two. It's two words, smart ass. Two words. <laughs> We've been doing a lot of googling. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so who, <laughs> Kevin, you gonna pitch us a story about Godzilla? Oh, Gum? Uh, okay. Uh, so, so uh, this is um, this is a tie-in to our peppermint hippo uh, story. Uh, in this town, it's kind of a hellmouth, sort of like in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So you've got multiple things going on. <laughs> Uh, and in this in this library, the whole hams, beer, and Godzilla heads thing, those were two principal ingredients in a uh, in a ritual that was meant to, to keep the hell mouth closed. So um, they were going to perform this ritual, and then they left behind the ingredients because they knew this stuff isn't going to last. It's not going to be around forever, but it has the exact chemical components of what's needed so that when the hippo uh, rises, they can perform the ritual with these two things and close the hell mouth. So this is how they're going to, to stop. So the zoomers co converge on the library and they consume the hams beer and the uh, Godzilla heads in a ritual that closes the hell mouth and saves everyone from the peppermint hippo. We know how much zoomers like hams beer. <laughs> it's probably <laughs> retro like paps, like PBR. Probably the kids probably, like it. Probably. Yeah. But there were schlitz. <laughs> Schlitz, hams, and PBR. Ah, uh, college. All right. <laughs> All right, Nick, who wants to be the meat and the sandwich I'll, on the Godzilla gun? I'll go. Page? I'll go. I always like being the meat and the sandwich. I say that every week, man. I think you think I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so what I think we're we're dealing with is a uh, a coming of age story. So like Stand By Me mixed with uh, Indiana Jones, okay? So I think we have a, a group of kids who uh, in the Washington have been doing a lot of a lot of research and a lot of research. And they're kind of a, a motley crew. You know what I mean? There's, <laughs> you know, a, a little breakfast clubby. You know, there's just different people in the constituency of the group. But uh, they have been doing a lot of bit of, a lot of research. And the, the bookworm has found that the library was built uh, on an ancient series of uh, uh catacombs all right and so they you know they go and they explore one day after school and they see uh the face of evil down there which looks a lot like a peppermint hippo and so they're down there and they're looking until so they run out of there and they research more and they research more and they decide you know we've read up about the peppermint hippo there was an esteemed scholar uh named known only as k tum that knew everything about the peppermint hippo <laughs> All right, and so they, they read they read one of his books, and uh, they decided that if they didn't stop the peppermint hippo, that uh, literally it was going to devour the world. So they decided that that night they were going to meet back at the library, and they were going to go and they were going to stop the hippo. And they said, you know, let's bring some supplies in case we're down there for a while. Well, all they could get their hands on was some Godzilla gum, and one guy stole a six pack from his dad's fridge and drank one on the way over. That's why there was only five beers left. So they went down into the catacombs, lost track of time. And in this uh, kind of endless battle against the peppermint hippo, you know, they're still down there uh, to this day fighting. They never came back up. Uh, the library did some renovations and kind of walled off the thing. And they're down there keeping a, uh, keeping a vigil uh, for Walla Walla, Washington, to make sure that the the hippo doesn't rise. So, <laughs> the rise of the hippo. There's a good yeah. episode title. There you right. go. <laughs> uh, Desiree also wanted to remind us that Miller High Life was good in college. Uh, uh, that's true. Wrong. That's, it Back, was never good. When I was in college, we used to drink college. Milwaukee's Best, and we'd call it the Beast. And there was Milwaukee's mm. Best Light, which was the blue can, and we called it the Blueberry Beast. I don't know if that was mm. just for us. We was, had a we had not a universal ice. thing. De desperate times. I used to drink the the Mr. Boston's. Like I don't know if you guys know what that is, but you go to the vodka section and you look all the way on the bottom on the floor, if covered with dust, and uh, we'd get the handles of Mr. Boston. So that was Miller High Life was a treat compared to that. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was too busy throwing up great Mad Dog 2020. Atta boy. Yeah. <laughs> Mad Dog Boone's Farm. Yep, that was college. Boone's Farm. Yep. <laughs> All right, Nick, what do you got on Godzilla Gum? Well, so this is clearly a classic story. There we go. Of uh, time travel <laughs> here. And um, we've got some Zoomers who are from the uh, era in which uh, this beer was a big thing who have uh, been, they've been able to time travel. Um, and Ham's beer actually has a chemical in it that allows them to come back. 
So what they do is they uh, they time travel with a six pack, uh, and then they that that's their their like you know fuel for getting back to the time that they need to go to. Um, what these what these people uh, do actually is kill people in different times, and so they've gotten a um, a lead. And the way that they research their leads, since they're from you know the past, is uh, they go to libraries. And uh, they go to libraries and they research their person and try to find information about that person. Sometimes they can't find any. Um, sometimes they do. And sometimes they, uh, they they figure out, you know, hey, this was a famous person. So uh, they go in the future, they research this person, and then they go back in time and they kill the person. That's what's happening here. So I got a secret word. Let's see. I got the best story. Uh, <laughs> I got fucking hand beer. Um, pretty much, I don't know how I don't win this thing every time. Nailed it. All right. I, I, I have a theory. As to why you're this game right now. <laughs> Ouch. We're going to need a sick burn graphic up here. Okay, so coming up now, we have a bonus round. Now, this is something, this is not the bad pitches thing I was talking about the other day. This is something that I came up with yesterday, and this might, um, this might, this might go terribly, but I don't know. We'll see. I'm calling this pitch tag. It's sort of like uh, Mad Libs, which, mm. hey, you know what? Is there a, a a talk? Is there a podcast or a political talk radio show called Mad Libs? Because if there's not, there should be. That's a great title. Anyway, give, give me twenty minutes. <laughs> Kevin will go make it. Um, okay, so here's the way this is going to work. I am going to call on someone to complete each of these sentences. Now you don't have to use you don't don't use the actual word that's in these these books, but just come up with like treat it like a Mad Lib. <laughs> All right. So. Um, <laughs> Kevin, it was the best of times. It was the worst of hippo rituals. Hippo <laughs> rituals. All right. <clears throat> it is a truth universally. It is. Uh, this should be acknowledged. I don't know why that's not in that. That a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of Nick. How do you complete a that? Fortune, a, a fortune cookie. Want of a fortune cookie. Okay. R A. <laughs> Pitches a story based on it was the best of times. It was the worst of hippo rituals. Well, I think that um, we have a uh, someone who just moved into town uh, just recently, and uh, they uh, uh, googled because it's, it's a guy and he's kind of lonely. He's a little he's a little hard up, so he googled around for a, a, a gentleman's club and sees something called the peppermint hippo, and he goes there. Right. And he walks in and uh, unfortunately the, the hippo was closed that night. All right. But he still thought maybe I can get in there and they got some video or something that I can watch because, you know, the Internet's not enough for me. And uh, he goes in there and he sees, you know, all of the dancers around the uh, stage uh, trying to perform a ritual to keep the hippo from rising. And when their concentration gets broken, uh, the hippo comes out just long enough to snatch him and drag him into the catacombs homes of the underworld and and then he's dead and that's a terrible hippo ritual so <clears throat> very nice this was uh <clears throat> i just dropped this comment slogan for ham spear a headache in every can that's pretty good that's a good one <laughs> all right our second one so nick you you said fortune cookie right uh what if i did <laughs> then that means kevin's gonna pitch us the story okay perfect then yeah if i did i said fortune cookie <laughs> Kevin, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a fortune cookie. Yes, uh, because uh, in this world, in this reality, uh, the fortune cookie is actually the greatest symbol of power. Uh, and so when you have amassed a great fortune, if you don't have the fortune cookie, then you're, you're always in danger of your power be ta being taken away. It's the one cookie to rule them all. So <laughs> mm. the entire world is in conquest. I mean, they're, they're, they're rushing to achieve the fortune cookie so that they can amass their own power and fortune in this world. So if you're without the fortune cookie, uh, you are in danger of being toppled. Excellent. One cookie mm. to rule them all. I like that a lot. <laughs> all right. So normally I, when I mine these stories, I go back cause I don't like to talk about current events and stuff, but this one I like. So this one, it's a little hashtag topical. Mm. Okay. Let's see. Putting hashtag. on the brakes. 
organizers of Philadelphia's 12th annual Naked Bike Ride have canceled the event because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Ride organizer Maria Sherman said she hopes people will be able to return next year and that riders are, quote, taking advantage of the emptier streets and riding, dash, dash, masks up. The Philly Naked Bike Ride attracts thousands of riders and covers a 10-mile course taking in the city's landmarks, such as Independence Hall and the Liberty Bell. Who would like to pitch us a story about canceling the Naked Bike Ride? Okay. It could be Kevin. It could be R.A. It could be Nick. Mm. I was going to give Nick a chance. I don't think Nick's had a chance to go first. Give Nick I'll a chance. First. It's a good episode title, give me, too. Give me a chance? Okay. All um, we are saying is give Nick a chance. <laughs> just give me a chance. Just, you know, that, that's why I'm not in this thing. <laughs> I don't have a chance. I'd say, I'd say give him a pity place. vote, but if we did that, we'd probably all lose to Nick this round because mm. nobody's voting for anybody. <laughs> so no pity uh, votes for Nick. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I got nothing. This story is not oh, cool. anything. What? Oh, that's it? <laughs> the, story kind of, the story sucks, actually, is what, is what that it does. <laughs> <build up. laughs> yeah. that, huh? So Nick okay. says he's got nothing. Nick, can, We'll circle back to Nick. Nick's going to come up with something. <laughs> you know what? It's Seriously. a good week to pass because uh, um, I don't think there's going to be anybody voting for me anyway. So um, I'm not really going to. Oh, not with that, that attitude. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Talk about fishing so, for s- sympathy, man. Here we go. <laughs> God. I, I got one. I got all right, one. All right, Kevin, what do you got? And, and, and the, uh, the honest truth is this is actually word for word what Nick was going to say. I was going to so, say. It sounds like you're going to steal my idea. Uh, yeah, I'm stealing Nick's idea. So um, so the scenario here is that um, because this is an annual event, a year in advance, a group of, uh, of thieves scoped things out. Like they were, they were going to pull the, one of the greatest heists in history. They were going to steal the Liberty Bell, and they were going to do it during the spectacle of this naked bike ride across the city. So they scoped everything out during the last one and then planned meticulously based on what they were seeing there and they had contingency plans and everything. But the one thing they couldn't plan on was the pandemic. So they've got everything in place. Everything is set to go. There's some automated things that are gonna happen. And now it's a race against the clock to dismantle their their little Rube Goldberg machine of uh, things that were gonna happen during this naked bike ride so that uh, they can not be discovered. Because if it goes through now, they'll be found out. So now, they, because the whole event was canceled for COVID, they have to race against the clock and, and prevent themselves from stealing the Liberty Bell or they'll all go to prison. Very nice, I like the way it's that It's like a reverse heist. A reverse <laughs> heist. I don't think I've seen that subcategory. Also, they're Zoomers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah. nah, no. That was Nick's idea, though. So if you vote, <laughs> that was it. The point the point goes to Nick if you vote for Kevin. Okay, all right, I, I can go. I got you. All right, now Kevin's so, gonna see the. Uh, no one's gonna vote for his idea. He's gonna see oh. the, uh, the bias here. <laughs> all right, so I think that uh, that the uh, the real story is obviously is what's happening below the surface. Okay, that the the organizer Maria Sherman is, uh, you know, she's all about independence. She's all about liberty. You know, she's hardcore. Like, I'm not canceling this thing because of the COVID. You know, I'm going to wear my mask. I don't believe the numbers. Doesn't matter. I'm doing it. Well, what happened is a, uh, a, 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 a dashing doctor came up to her and said that he had uncovered a, uh, a, bio, a biotech uh, terrorism group who had engineered a disease that was, um, it wasn't released through like, you know, mucosa and stuff like that, right? So it could actually get around the COVID, get around the masks and things like that. It's released from like body, you know, body sweat and like perspiration and stuff. And it's, you know, more deadly than the Spanish flu. And, you know, it's just really bad. And so he tells Maria what he found. She obviously doesn't believe him because she's all about freedom. And uh, eventually he takes her to the lab and he shows her uh, exactly what's going on. And so she does the only thing that she can do to help keep uh, the people of Philly safe, which is uh, 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 cancel the event under the guise of COVID and save the day. So Maria canceling the event is uh, is really saving the world. Uh, in essence, this, so that's why this would be the most here. boring action movie ever. <laughs> like the, the resolution is, oh, it's, it's a romance. It's, this event. It's, 
<laughs> it's a romance, Ooh. man. I told you it's a ro- romance. It's like there's a dashing a doctor, musical man. build up. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and then yeah. and then she just gets online. She gets on the internet and goes, uh, "Not having it today." Gunk. <clears throat> Send. <laughs> delete. 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 <laughs> Send. <laughs> The name of the movie, Sin. <laughs> uh, Nick, you've had some time to think. Are you still are you sticking to your guns and you're going to pass well, this one up? Or do you have um, another? Well, actually, I mean, I, I know Kevin stole your story and then, then R.A. stole I've had your to, second idea. Yeah, against all odds, I've come up with something different. Wow, I'm amazed. Yeah, I had to, I had to completely unwind um, from what Kevin did. So he stole my – just people like that, you know. That is um, against the odds. <laughs> What, uh, what we've got here is a, a priest uh, from the um, peppermint, the peppermint hippo. hippo, and uh, and he's actually this is he you know he's in Philly of course, and so uh, he's what's what's going on here is is he's basically recruiting Zoomers for his uh, his strip club, um, and uh, the way he does that is by going to this naked bike ride, um, and uh, just like uh, just like the great action movie that it is, the resolution is. They decide to cancel the uh, the bike ride so that the the, the peppermint hippo priest can't uh, recruit for his strip club anymore. Um, that's that's what's happening here. Nice tie in. Or they had to cancel it because he hired everyone because they were all so good looking. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> also, the zoomers. Maybe it was that. There weren't enough people left because they're all working at the peppermint hippo now. <laughs> <laughs> AKA his, his Catholic school. All right, we've got. Do these, my question is: My question is, do people not think about the logistics of riding your bicycle naked? I, you, just you know what I mean. Really, really Look, great. I, I, mean, I do everything I can to not think of the logistics of riding a bicycle naked. Okay? Like, who are these people that are just like I? Not only do I want to do the most uncomfortable exercise on the planet, but I, I want to do it naked. Think about these people, man. Do you really want these people around? Because I, I would say no. <laughs> they yeah. live in Philly. I'm not sure what else they've got to look forward to. Uh, Paul Kohler says point. strippers rule the world. In some ways. And save it from time to time. <laughs> All right, everyone. We're coming up on half an hour, and uh, we've got one more story, but I don't feel like doing it. So I think we'll go ahead and this round and watch this. I can move people around. Are you seeing Whoa. that happen in real time? Whoa. Whoa. I know. Wait, look, Nick's up there. <laughs> now he's down there. Now I'm over here. Now I'm down there. What's going to happen? Yeah. Anything could happen. Nobody knows what's going to happen. All right, everyone. That is that's story on the spot. And I'm clearly out of stuff to talk about. I'm just, Aren't you guys glad you showed up today? Yeah. yeah. That. Oh my God. Thanks yeah. for being here. <laughs> you should have led with that, man. We like, hey, stick around to the end. We've got a special surprise. <laughs> I'm going to show you new features in the streaming software. <laughs> All right, everyone. Three off coming. Monty. See you guys.